Hello, and you're very welcome to another show of the JMAC podcast. I'm John Mann, and of course, this podcast is sponsored by orgoretro.com and the tax board. Use my promo code JMAC podcast to get 15% off on orgoretro.com and get the best skins, gloves, and equipment on attack.ie. Be attack minded. And today, I am joined by Tackling Sport uh, journalist uh, Daniel Hussey to preview this weekend's Kerry and Tyrone game taking place this Saturday in Crow Park at half three, a game we cannot wait for. So, uh, Daniel, how are you keeping? Keeping well, John. Now delighted we have a, like an All Ireland semi final, a second All Ireland semi final to talk about. Like it'd be a bit boring leading up to a final, carry walk over and all that. But uh, yeah, keeping well and like you said, really looking forward to the game. Bit of a weird throwing time, three thirty on a Saturday. Yeah. You're setting down for the Premier League games, and you're gonna have to switch over. But yeah, really looking forward. Well, one thing I will say is Daniel, it, it suits the lads. It's going to be having a few points for it. Not the Sunday you'll be getting the head for already if it's gonna have three. So <laughs> it suits. Well, uh, uh, yeah, no, but like Liverpool, Chelsea have five as well, so you get out of the ground and then you've you've got the Premier League football as well. So I, I don't know if that was done per- on purpose, but you know, <laughs> I think it's a small bit of common sense if it was. Like, but yeah, Radio Board should be cracking game. Like, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. One we one we really cannot wait for. So we'll, looking forward to it, Dan. Um, Kerry and Tyrone, a game we know all about throughout the years. Oh three, oh five, oh eight. Obviously, Tyrone had uh, Kerry's numbers in them years, but in recent years, maybe Kerry have got. Maybe that um, that situation sort of, but uh, Dan, this game it takes on life of its own. We're really looking forward to it this weekend. What's your thoughts ahead of it? Yeah, like it's amazing. I, I think I might have been on the podcast before mentioning you know GA talk before games. I do definitely think it's unique to GA compared to other sports where we we end up talking so much about the history. Like you know, surely like 2003, 2005, 2008 cannot be relevant till today. But in, in a small way, it is like and the at least for the supporters anyway. And I think that builds so much to the game. Like it really kind of takes life of its own. And like you said, they've had some incredible battles and Tyrone definitely got the better of it. But the debate always is like Kerry got an extra All-Ireland in that decade, but they couldn't beat Tyrone. It's just great talking points that I, I even see to this day. People still talk about who was the better team in that decade anyway. So you then look at modern day and like you said, Kerry had the upper hand. There's a big win in uh, down in Kerry in the qualifier and Kerry celebrated like they won an All-Ireland. And... You know they they won the 2019 All Ireland semi final, which is probably the latest one we can go on. And obviously they had the, they had the upper hand in the league. So definitely, like in recent years, it's, there's been no contest between Kerry and Tyrone. And look at the start of the year, I would have been so certain, and with no money, like all the money in the world, that would be Dublin Kerry final. I just thought those two teams were so far apart. The chasing pack now, Mayo obviously caused that shock in um on like last two Saturdays ago. So to kind of set it up nicely. And it's just really carries to, to lose in terms of getting to an all-around final here. Um, but yeah, I, I guess with Tyrone, you just, there is something about them, this whole COVID thing and, you know, vaccines are not taking vaccines. There's a lot of stuff going on. And like Kerry have had, like David Moran's quoted after the game saying, there was a three-week break initially to the all-around semi-final. And he said two weeks is perfect. Yes. They didn't even get the three weeks. They got the four weeks and then they, they, it ended up being five weeks. Whereas Tyrone have kind of said, this is where we're playing on this day and let's prepare for that. So there's a, it's it's typical ter- Tyrone Kerry. There's so much th- going on outside the game, so much history that we sometimes need to forget all that at the end of the day and look, focus on the two teams and what teams are the better players, better set of players, better set of tactics, better manager uh, and go from there. But it's set up so nicely <laughs> because of all that nonsense that mm. I get bought into it as well. But like you said, it's Tyrone Kerry. It takes on a life of its own. And like come 3.30, there'd be you no know, other show in town than Crow Park with 24,000 people. And hopefully it feels like a lot more than that. Yeah, 100% and 100%. And obviously, in recent weeks, Tyrone were hit with COVID. Um, there's word in the street. Some of the players didn't want to get vaccinated. Some players actually ended up in hospital with it. Some very sick cases. And it's just a very delicate time for the people and the squad in Tyrone there, Daniel. And I suppose it's 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 a matter we can't really criticise because it is obviously a very serious case. But the COVID situation, it definitely would have been, you know, let's be frank about it, Daniel. It would have been doing Virgil Logan and uh, Brian Dewar's heads in. Yeah, and I guess the cat was kind of let out of the bag but with Virgil Logan's comments saying that, you know, we kind of not advise the players, but kind of warn players of the risk of getting the vaccine in terms of in the middle of the championship or by the sounds of things would be in the middle of the league when they were offered. And it's important to note, I guess, the vaccine uptake uh, in the 26 counties seems to be a lot higher than the six counties. I don't know whether that's a legacy of um, how easy it became in Ireland to get a vaccine in terms of walking into pharmacies. And one important thing to mention on the vaccines and why it became an issue is because like the HSC changed their guidelines maybe 
five or six weeks ago uh, and i'm certain it's the same in the uk or if not it's very similar that if you if you are vaccinated by more than 14 days and you are close contact you don't actually have to self-isolate now in, in, in ireland which kind of suggests that a lot of the players probably weren't vaccinated the fact that they all had to self-isolate by the sounds of it or at least that's what we're told and obviously a player having to be you know hospitalized that's when it gets kind of serious in terms of like you shouldn't really be advising your players and we're only going off a quote by the manager here it's not like we're going off a you know, hearsay or rumours here, Fergal Owen said, would they kind of advise players of the risk? So it's kind of messy in that sense. Look, I still think it was the right call to for the GA to give Tyrone the extra week. I don't think they had any other option. And I think they probably should have got ahead of it, knowing that Tyrone probably would have bluffed, or not bluffed, sorry, but would have, you know, said, we're, we're not playing on this day, we won't be ready, but the next week. And it is important for the integrity of the competition to have it. But yeah, I do think come, like, play the game, whatever happens, brilliant, have the final, but there should probably be a small bit of investigation in terms of what went on you know, during this process that every other county seems to have got their ducks in a row there. Maybe it's a bit of luck in terms of the outbreak, but a lot of questions I haven't got answered yet, or I don't think anyone's answered from the Toronto camp. And those Fergalone quotes kind of, you know, would worry you slightly in terms of what was said. But look, the main thing is we have hopefully an even contest between two counties and all the Toronto players have their full bill of health. Now, what will concern you is looking at the Galway under 20 hurling manager. He was saying that a lot of his, they were hit with an outbreak and then a lot of the players after 10 minutes, you can see the lads that had COVID that uh, were out of breath, shortness of breath, stuff like that, legacies from COVID. I know Kieran Murphy, who's the second captain's presenter, spoke that he he got COVID in January and he's still feeling the effects in his body. So there's a lot of like long lasting stuff from COVID. You don't know where, where, what's going to happen. I hope obviously it doesn't boil down to that, but uh yeah, you, massive concerns for those Toronto players, and hopefully everyone's okay. Everyone's able to play well, and there's no, like you know, long-lasting legacies from that. I don't know how many actually were positive cases and how many just had to self-isolate. But um, look, we've got a game, and they've had it. I wouldn't say enough time because I don't know how long. I'm not a medical expert or anything like that. But we have a game, which is the main thing. Uh, but I do think come the end of this tour, there should be a few questions asked to Toronto because they strong-handed the GA in a bit in the sense that I think it's million revenue if you do quick maths on 50 euro by you know. 24,000 people that uh, it's a lot of uh, money not just in, in any year but particularly in a COVID year when mm. the GA have only had three three good matches to make money off in elite gated football anyway so uh, yeah and again it's just a lot of like side issues and stuff like that but it is important to mention the COVID thing because we'll know at full time whether it has an effect or not and I'm hoping that it, it doesn't and Tyrone are able to add a full bill of health to, and I heard that they're all training which is good so um, yeah bring it on but yeah there are a few questions alright I'd, I'd be asking in terms of how this mess kind of happened, which is, you know, a lot of club players are going to suffer as a result of that in Mayo, Kerry and Toronto. Yeah, definitely, Dan, definitely. I suppose it's an interesting point as well, because it depends obviously with this COVID as well, because like a lot of people would have got the COVID, they would have been very fatigued like a week or two after when they do recover from it, Dan. So the game this Saturday will be very, very intense. You could see signs maybe from Tyrone in the first half, the end of the first half, the start of the second half, some of the players fatiguing up, maybe cramping up. And that literally could be due to, due to them uh, get COVID in the last few weeks, Dan. So fatigueness really could come into play here. So, you know, that's something Tyrone really will need to take and um, keep an eye on. Yeah, and like a lot of people are saying, like this, <clears throat> what's happened with that has kind of helped Tyrone in the sense of preparation. And like I mentioned earlier, like, to carry not knowing when the game's going to be played but yeah this unknown of COVID you don't know how much is that's going to have an effect or not and again we won't know to full time but yeah like and at Tyrone like for Tyrone to win this game they need everyone 100% fit they need a super game plan then they need a second game plan and then third game plan and fourth game plan because Kerry will keep chopping and changing until it works so you'd, you'd kind of be concerned in that sense that Tyrone there's still question marks over that and these lads who have it like even if they are fine now you don't know when it, you're like in the intense battle like you mentioned but yeah, for me in the game itself, like I'm looking at the two teams, and like I do think Kerry are stronger, like on a level play level playing field. And the fact that I know people saying the preparation isn't ideal. They've had, you know, they were probably preparing for Dublin or how to beat Dublin last year, which is why they got beaten by Cork. They're probably doing the same again, only a different style of play. And then Dublin end up getting beaten, so that's kind of a mind shift as well. So there's a lot going on, John. Like to be honest <laughs> with you, and that's before we haven't even talked about the players yet. Yeah. I don't like this. But uh, it's, it'll be very fascinating to see the setups. It'll be very fascinating to see the start. Like, I am expecting Tyrone to be quick out of the blocks, not too dissimilar to the 2018 All Iron final. I don't know why that crossed my mind today. We're thinking about the game, but I really think it's that type of Tyrone might just go all out at the blocks and maybe get a first quarter lead. But And again, not too dissimilar to the Munster final. I do expect Kerry not quite that 
uh, extent, but I do expect Kerry to kind of kick on. But be interesting on some of the how the team set up. Like I said, but like it's been a tough year for the the tournament management team, like doing alone to deal with all this COVID stuff. And again, this is all unprecedented in fairness to them. So uh, yeah, be fascinating come three thirty how it, it starts, the game starts, and then like you said, that fatigue. It's, when does the fatigue kick, kick in? Is it yeah. the end of the first half? Yeah. Is you know at the end of the third quarter? Do the water breaks help a small bit? I don't know. Yeah, like there's so much to get, uh, consider really when you do think about it um, for this game. And I suppose, obviously, the bookies are given uh, to roll a five to watch five to one shot at this game, Daniel. You know, is that just uh, the kind of lauding us in? Like, are we just nearly, is this fool's look at this stage? Are Ker- like Kerry are piping hot favourites, not only to win this game, but to win the Sam Maguire. So is that nearly bet to nearly be easily drawn into? Do Tyrone really you know, deserve that five to one shout? Or what would be the verdict in that, Daniel? Because... That's seriously good odds. I, yeah, I think from memory they were like seven to two or four to one, maybe four to one when the draw was made, or sorry, when they both won the provisionals, and then COVID outbreak was realised. So they were actually pushed out again from memory to sixes. So the fact they went into fives is probably shine. Like because I was listening to so many you know podcasts and previews, and the way people go on, you, I was like, Jesus, Tyrone, like uh, everyone not tipping Tyrone, but like saying they're going to come with this serious game plan and. When people try to back it up, it was usually kind of referencing 2003, 5 and 2008, like we talk about for some reason, but they, it does draw you in. But I did look on uh, Odds Checker, there was a small bit of blue on uh, Tyrone, Tyrone suggesting that people are kind of backing that 5 to 1, 6 to 1. It wouldn't be a bet for me, like to be honest with you, I really expect Kerry to show their dominance here. And I'm not saying Clarny was an example like the league semi final, like Kerry had, all, had it all in their favour in terms of like home advantage. They probably wanted a small bit more than Tyrone. But it's sort of rubbish that um, I think Eamon Fitzmaurice came out with or someone just came out with that Tyrone were training on the morning of the league semi-final. Apparently, that's the rumour going around. So, hence the results. Uh, you'd have to be mad to do that kind of stuff. But you, you can you can never say never. But I, I do think there's a small bit of gulf between this, the sides. Like you have to go back to like Tyrone have had years and years of Mickey Hart, which great success, not too dissimilar to Arsene Wenger. And it just seemed to not peter out. But, you know, there, there, didn't, there wasn't that fourth All-Ireland that they... Uh, that they they wanted really and in their first year do you do i really see the new management team going and winning all iron final no like i don't and i do think tubbling carry and i didn't at the time but i guess now i think mayo are just a little bit clearer to run at the moment like i i think we're actually on your pod again a couple of weeks ago and i said that there there will be a or some other pod i was saying there will be an all iron in this tyrone team but i don't see it for another three or four years because you have dublin who will definitely be hungry to come back next year you have this Kerry team who i think are too far clear at them at the moment and then mayo if they do get over the line this year that'll be this year or if they don't maybe they'll be ready to go next year but that it i don't think it happens overnight and i think people are paying too much into this preparation about the game the fact that Kerry have had this uncertain preparation which i agree with but that's not going to I think it, that might be worth a point or two maybe down the line but in the game, but I don't think see it as a match-defining moment. So I really expect Kerry to click into gear. Now, having said that, I wouldn't be surprised come the first water break that Tyrone are, you know, 7-5 up or something, and there's a bit of momentum or a 1-4 to 5, you know. Yeah, well, yeah, that, that's a good point. And I suppose, obviously, in that uh, all Ireland final in 2018, Daniel, we'd seen the first 20 minutes, everyone was getting their home mm-hmm. hopes up. And actually, coincidentally, Tyrone were five to one to win that All Ireland final back then as well, so it was. It oh, was, there you go. It, it, it was similar odds. So what I'd be thinking is that first twenty minutes, Tyrone came out the blocks flying. So is it kind of is it a similar game in that sort of sense? Whereas Tyrone probably are underdogs for the game. Like will Tyrone up? They will need that seventy minute performance, one hundred ten percent. But if they give in that first twenty minutes, really good performance, like maybe this Saturday again, it's so vitally important that they follow up after Daniel. Yeah, and I don't know why that game came over to me. Coincidentally, in a quick story, it was actually the only Dublin All Ireland final I missed. That'll give you an idea how boring 2018 became. That it was the weekend of electric picnic, and I'm not that I was sick of winning All Irelands, but you know, to <laughs> me, growing up, Dublin Kerry, Dublin Mayo, there was yeah. always a re- you know, it, and we just decided we didn't want to give the the tickets and like drive back from EP on the Sunday, so we gave the tickets up in the club and. We ended up, I thought we'd get a, a place to watch the game, but we ended up having to listen to Darren Maloney on the RT commentary hmm. on the radio. But like you said, Tyrone were out of the blocks quick. And I remember going, is this it? Like, this is an extra, I couldn't, gave them no chance before the game. But And obviously Dublin went on to win. But by the way, on, on a side note, like listen to a game on the radio sounds like the best match ever. And then I watched the highlights and it was, you know, Dublin. Second half was really boring and Dublin won it. 
I don't know why again it came into my head, but I just see something similar where Tyrone, like, and everyone's yeah. saying like this motivation, Tyrone are up for it. And when that happens, they tend to start, you know, a team like that starts well. And if you look at Kerry, even against Cork, like that first quarter, I've been there going, this is going to happen again. Like Kerry mm. <laughs> lose to Cork. And what, what was this? Did they end up winning by a cricket score in the end? Like, so it's, I do think Kerry are prepared for that. And not that, pre- sometimes you can be prepared for something and you won't be able to deal with it, but they'll stay within striking distance of Tyrone. So I, I fully expect Tyrone to come out of the blocks really well. And I fully expect them to be possibly leading in the first quarter. But I'm not saying the game will be over at half time, but I do think Kerry will maybe eke out a couple of points at half time. But then on, it's not even you look at the bench. You can look at just that starting 15, that starting five or six fours and the way they can move people around. Like, And everyone talks about David Clifford and Sean O'Shea and rightly so. They're, in my opinion, two of the top six best footballers in the country, if you include maybe Clucks and uh, Kilkenny Fenton and Conor Callan. Yes, the carries and possibly football of the year is Paddy Clifford. Mm-hmm. So straight away, you've got a problem there. You've got three. You've got Stephen O'Brien with Pace. You've got Paul Ganey. And that's not even including the bench. Their their five like fours are definitely going to get on the score sheet. And you saw in the Munster final, like David Clifford, um, unbelievable job done on him. Yes, Kerry they didn't need him. And this like narrative that David Clifford doesn't play well, Kerry don't. But then they've Sean O'Shea. But if Sean O'Shea doesn't play well, then you've got Potty Clifford. Now those if you keep those three quiet. Stephen O'Brien was I think Kerry's best player in 2019, or one of them, or he won a couple of games on his own from memory. So. And then you've got Paul Ganey, who's a superstar. So they've just got so many attacking options that I just can't see how Tyrone... I can see how they Tyrone have some sort of game plan to keep that intact and maybe eke out it. Like, because they have a couple of good forwards themselves. But come the end of the game, in the second half particularly, I just think Kerry, like, like they've been doing all year, um, I think this is a train. And it's almost because Dublin are out now that Kerry are going to start like wobbling and shaking. Maybe there's room for that in the final, but I think I just think Kerry are too clear of this Tyrone team at the moment. But uh mm-hmm. it like I said, it, there's some incredibly exciting players to, on show and look if, if Tyrone managed to get the game the ball into the likes of Darren McCurry and Matthew Donnelly, we know this Kerry full back line isn't the strongest full back line in the country. That's that's mm-hmm. well known now. So Tyrone do have chances of scoring, which is why again I think they'll start well, but Kerry again will probably eke it out like Mm. And I suppose, like when you look at it too, uh, Daniel as well. Like Tyrone did leap over Mon in that Ulster, the Ulster final, and then obviously Kerry, obviously hammered Cork, and obviously not a not a very fancy Cork team. But at the end of the day, it was a very convincing win. It was a hockey hockey score in the end, really. But I suppose preparation going into this one, uh, Daniel, Tyrone did come through some stiff tests. I know they obviously played ourselves. They played uh, Donegal, a very good win against Donegal, mind you, um, a very fancy Donegal team, and obviously the win against Mon in the Ulster Championship Ulster final. And then you look at the Kerry state of things, they bet a very a very poor uh, Tipperary team. And obviously, as I say, not a very fancy Cork team. So uh, does preparation count for anything here, Daniel? It, it it definitely does. And we've seen it before with battle-hardened teams that, like, in my opinion, Tyrone sh- sh- were all but beaten against Donegal. If Michael Murphy scores that penalty, and it, I think it's five points in it then, instead it was a four-point swing, Tyrone went up and scored the other end. Then five minutes later, Michael Murphy gets a black card. Like, those two circumstances are very fortunate and nothing that Tyrone did to stop that, if you know what I mean. It was Michael Murphy's stupid tackle and it was Michael Murphy an unfortunate penalty miss. And then in the final against Monaghan, it was probably 50-50 to be fair to them, but I thought towards the end, if any team was pushing, it was Monaghan. And I, I think Tyrone scored like five points in the second half. That's got to be a concern. Uh, and again, it kind of feeds into that narrative that they might start well, but they might not have the finishing gear or the subs to make an impact. They didn't seem to... A couple of bursts up the field towards the end. They got a couple of crucial scores in fairness to them, and they did dig it out both those games. But yeah, I, I guess the battle-hardened nature is important. But if you're up against a better team, you know, I just think that golfing class is too big. big. Like, if you ask me, who, who would you... What preparation would you prefer? Of course to just about beat Donegal and beat them well enough in the end and just about beat Monaghan is definitely better preparation than beating, uh, you know, Cork in a Munster final and the, and the other two matches they had in, in Munster. So, but that that doesn't change the fact that I think this Kerry team is far yeah. superior than Tyrone. I think that's getting lost a small bit in a lot of the analysis. Now, could have an egg in my face come the final whistle and uh, there'd be no, nobody as excited as me if Tyrone are two or three points at a minute ago, mm. trust me, but I can't see it anyway that this Tyrone team is, is at Kerry's level because remember this Kerry team's been on the go I would say 19 is probably fair in terms of the likes of when Clifford and Sean O'Shea came into the team properly and they nearly beat Dublin five in a row they actually had them beat in that end that David Moran gave the ball away 2020 they made an absolute mess of it uh, against Cork and they kind of rectify that a small bit in the Munster final this year and they'll just be like everyone's like how motivated Tyrone will be because it's Kerry but like how motivated will Kerry be because they have a chance of winning an All-Ireland here without Dublin in it 
they're like I think they're odds on at the bookies. I'll give you an idea. And I kind of agree with them and side with them that I think this Kerry team is too strong, particularly for Tyrone. But um, in terms of preparation, yeah, I definitely would prefer Tyrone's preparation. And I guess the COVID uh, situation probably helps Tyrone in terms of like the change in the dates and all. But that only takes you so far. Like that again, that might mean a, might mean a point or two either way. But I think this Kerry team is is a bit clearer than that. But um, I don't know what you think about that. But I just think Kerry, like I think we always get overhyped in terms of looking at the small details too much and realize mm. that look at this team on paper like uh, any trader would do if they're making odds. This Kerry team is far superior than this Toronto team. I just can't see how come 70 minutes in Crow Park that uh, that Kerry won't win this. Although they actually have a poor recent record I read today in Crow Park, which I couldn't believe, which is staggering uh, um, considering their, their previous Crow Park record. But yeah, uh, it, I just think too much is made of these things sometimes that they are like factors, obviously, but I do think Kerry are too clear of Toronto on, on, on the paper anyway. On paper, definitely, Daniel, but it looks of it. But we will wait and see. And suppose into the game, uh, obviously, yeah. uh, as you were saying, there's so many talking points even before the game. So let's let's go into the matchups, let's go into the key players, and let's uh, talk football, Daniel. Obviously, you're looking at the to, uh, carry end of things. You know, Paddy Clifford, he's absolutely flying. Um, I was reading a good article. The uh, Kerry captain, Paul Murphy, was saying he's very impressed by Paddy Clifford. I think the whole country really is, Daniel, let's be honest. Sean O'Shea, David Clifford, flying. You know, Paul Gain, he's probably, he's, he's doing okay this year, but he could have a cracking game this this weekend. He could lead Kerry to another all Ireland final. We'll wait and see. So the Kerry side of things, Daniel, Paddy Clifford, he's been tremendous this year so far. Yeah, and the biggest comment I can give this Kerry forward line is just reminds me of Dublin at their pomp, which for me is probably that 18 final. And how, like, you look at the options they have, like, you've Sean O'Shea, as I said, Stephen O'Brien, David Clifford, Paul Gainey. Paddy Clifford and even Jack Barry's popping up with two points and you've got like David Moore and the experience of David Moore and, and then I think you've got a solid like half back line there so there's just so much going forward for Kerry and I, I do think they've added a bit of a, a running dimension I don't think it's like it probably is a small bit purposely done but it does seem to be while they still kick the ball really well there seems to be a lot more running not too dissimilar to what Mayo do obviously on a lesser scale but I do think Kerry now have the legs and a small bit more ability to run the ball and that's important against a team like Tyrone because if you look at Dublin the way they play Tyrone a lot it wasn't like kicking loads of ball in all the time like they of course the Dublin Tyrone goal came from Conor Callan getting the ball in the all-around semi-final I'm talking about here and you know they scored a goal straight away but Dublin were able to mix it up run the ball stay patient and I do think Kerry have added that into their game they kind of try to go away from this you know let's play like loads of sweepers here and have a team ready for Dublin because that clearly doesn't work. You need to beat the team that's in front of you. But I do think Kerry now have a small bit of dimensions to run the ball, but also kick the ball in. And one thing I noticed during the league, like Clifford became a lot more of a get the ball into Clifford and pop it off as opposed to get the ball into Clifford and he takes on his man and scores. So they've now got that option if David Clifford does get ahead of his man to either pop it off to a Paddy Clifford or a Paul Gainey or a Sean O'Shea who's running off the ball or he can go himself. So if you're a defender, you're like, do I go, do I commit to David Clifford? Do I follow the runner, tag the runner? So I, I just think Kerry have so much going on the forwards. And I do think Tyrone will come up with some sort of plan to nullify that for a certain period of time, which is more than likely going to be at the start of the game. But come the end of the game, there's so much going on that that forward line. They've got the subs to bring on, like, um, like, like you know, Killian Spillan, Stephen, you know, they put, like there's so many, so many options. And, yeah, I, I really, really like this Kerry forward line. And I do think they'd get it right. Now, we probably haven't seen them under massive, massive pressure. The last time we saw them under massive pressure, uh, the, not, the court game notwithstanding in the championship was that All-Ireland final 2019. But I do think overall they held up pretty well against what was a phenomenal Dublin team, albeit it might have been slightly coming to the end of the road. I probably Kerry met them a year too early and Dublin got them a year early enough. So I'm excited about what this Kerry team can do in turn. I am expecting a bit of a flair not not an absolute hammering but a bit of flair and excitement and enough that Kerry will go into the Mayo game heavy favourites but um it'd be interesting in terms of the matchups of who picks up Clifford um like it's been five weeks is a long time for him to think of that performance that he had against Cork it's probably the first time he's ever been marked out of the game like I remember Fitzsimons did a great job of him in the 19 replay but I think Clifford still got a few points like he obviously roasted Johnny Cooper and got him sent off in the first game so it it just it to be interesting how Clifford gets on and there's so many matchups which I, which is the reason I probably love to be at the game and watch the matchups you don't always get that on the TV I know you're going to the game yourself John but you can maybe text us a couple of the matchups before trial and that's usually the best bit like the Dublin Mayo game but sometimes when you're at the match then it all happens so quick that I can mm. keep up like who's Lee Keegan on is he on anyone but uh, mm. yeah that I'm very excited about that front uh, five particularly front five or six for Kerry and the ability they have in terms of switching it up too but 
yeah, it, it's all about Tyrone and how they can come up with a plan to to nullify that and whether they will mix up the the man marking jobs. Like, do you put a man on Kerry or do you put a man, sorry, on Clifford for 70 minutes or do you say, I don't know, to McCurran or McNamee or Hamsey or whoever's going to go on them to pick up Clifford for 10 minutes and maybe mix it up? There's, there's a lot of ways around that that Tyrone have had a few weeks to think about, but uh, it's going to be, those matchups in particular would be very interesting uh, in terms of like how they set up the game. 100%, 100%. Obviously, David Clifford, you were kind of referenced there. He's winning ball. He's laid it off. So maybe, maybe has uh, Peter Keane said to David Clifford, right, I'll nearly use you as a link man. Go get your scores. But at the end of the day, we are seeing Kerry, David Clifford's being marked out of every game. So if you think about it, Dan, if you've Sean O'Shea and the likes kind of running off his shoulder, they are getting scores from that. David Clifford scored one point against Cork in the Munster final and the rest of the team scored, what, 4 odd, four twenty. So maybe are they using David as a link man at the best times as well, Dan? Well, you've got to remember, like, Clifford missed the goal chance in the first two minutes and I guarantee you something, had he scored that goal chance, he'd have scored a lot more than a point to uh, the end, mainly because it would probably kill off Cork then, then and the fat Cork. Yeah, maybe the, and the game goes like, I know as a corner forward, again, this happens all the time to me. A game will get away from you now. You're, when you're David Clifford, it's a different ball. Game, it's better. <laughs> but uh, I do think there's something in that. I particularly notice it in league games where like the ball goes into Clifford and he's laying it off a lot more. I don't know if that's like intentional, but not that it reminds me, but just the first thing that came into my head was the Bernard Brogan and the change he made to his game with Pat Gilroy in 2010 and Pat Gilroy calling him out. Now, I don't, I'm not saying for one second, Peter Keane sat in a, in a meeting after the court game saying, David Clifford, we need to use it you know, you need to be running more or whatever, but there's definitely been a small change that, like, realistically, you're coming up against Kerry, and even the fact he didn't play well the last day, you turn on, you're still like, right, what's the job number one? Stop David Clifford. Mm -hmm. So if they're going to do that, Clifford might have to win the ball further out of the field, which means he's going to have to pop it off, but maybe Kerry want that in a way to get the likes of, and it's probably no coincidence in that sense that Paddy Clifford has come into his own, and suddenly you're like, which Clifford brother am I marking? But I guarantee you David Clifford will give away all his uh, Footballer of the Year or Young Footballer of the Year awards that he probably won't win this year for an all Ireland medal. Like, it's just, not, like, anyone would do that, but, like, particularly a, a Kerry footballer. Like, that's all they're judged upon down there, even now, despite the fact that Dubs have won so many all Irelands. But, yeah, I do think there is, if you add in the Clifford laying the ball off to what I believe is a lot more pace coming from that wing forward line and midfield from Kerry, uh, a lot more of the running game, that if you get a ball into Clifford, he will beat his man now. It's just a case of where that man's going to be that you push it on and then you've got like so many runners off the shoulder so it'd be interesting I'd be, like I'm fascinated I, I can't wait to watch like I get excited about like football like I'm an Arsenal fan I get excited about Premier League games but like I, like, I and it's just the routine of watching the game but like nothing happens in the game for mostly whereas Ga games on after five minutes there's gonna there's gonna be a ball kicked in at some point to Clifford you know and there's gonna be maybe 15 of them or 10 or 15 of them kicked into that forward line throughout the game I'm excited about how they're gonna do runners off the shoulder and all that but yeah, there's definitely something in, in the fact that I think Clifford could have a really good game on Saturday and not shoot the lights out or be man the match, but mm. will be a, a big figure. Like, And I, the last thing is he has made, I think he, there was one league game I watched and he just had so many assists. He's involved in so much of what Kerry do. Now, that, that wasn't as, as evident against Cork, but by and large, he's getting on enough ball that if it's not happening for him shooting boots, he's well able to lay the ball off to the, the right man like Sean O'Shea. But... Uh, yeah, it's that front five really. That's how the game's built around. It can Tyrone stop that front five before we get into who the carry full back line? Yeah, exactly. I suppose moving on to the next point, how do you mm. stop that? Because if you try to stop David Clifford, it's like trying to put a fire out with a with a bucket of water. You've Sean O'Shea, as I keep saying, uh, Paul Gainey and uh, Paddy Clifford and the rest of the lads to be worried and concerned about there. So, what do Tyrone actually do to stop these gents? Uh, down? Yeah, like it's it's just getting your matchups right, and like I'm not the Tyrone manager, so I, I it's, it, trying to come up with matchups earlier. I found it very hard, like myself, because like uh, it's it, interesting enough, like McCurran and Hamsey, who you know would be in that defence, they all they both popped up with a score each, and so did Niall Stullen, and I think McGeary and Peter Hart also got a score against uh, Monaghan. Uh, it'll be very. I'm even interested more, say like Peter Hart, for example, and what's his role going to be for the seventy minutes. Like I'd love to watch these games one at a time. So like I watched the Peter Hart showdown for 70 minutes and then mm -hmm. see how they get on one-on-one -on -one and then go and see who picked up Clifford for 70 minutes. But like say Peter Hart, is, like, is he going to pick up, uh, I don't know, is he going to pick up um, Paddy Clifford? Is he going to pick up uh, Sean O'Shea? Is he gonna pick, probably going to pick up Stephen O'Brien? Has he got the pace for that? Who's going to pick up or is he going to be just let loose forward? So I don't think that you're going to have a situation where all six Tyrone defenders are picking up men. There's definitely going to be a place for some sort of defensive system in terms of a plus one or whatever. But uh it's, it's, yeah, it's just fascinating in terms of the battles and where 
where like Tyrone can get a bit of joy. I guess like if I was setting up, I'd really try and stop Paddy Clifford because that you know there's I'm all for big names and I, I'm a sucker for big names and David Clifford is see the headlines and Sean O'Shea, but like you said yourself earlier, John, like Paddy Clifford is football of the year if Kerry win the All Ireland this year. You know, same way, even not too dissimilar as I said, Stephen O'Brien a couple of years ago was was unbelievable in Kerry's run to the All Ireland final. Now, so if I'm, you know, I think I think Dublin did a good job for memory on Stephen O'Brien in one of the All Ireland finals anyway, and I think that was lent a large way for Dublin winning the game. Whereas I think Tyrone really needs to focus down on Potty Clifford. So you're probably going into this game thinking, yeah, Potty Clifford is the biggest, not the biggest. De- well, I guess probably is the biggest danger. Like I find it hard to say ahead of Clifford or uh, Sean O'Shea, but yeah, Paddy has been exemplary this year, and it's not just the, like the, I think he scored three against Cork, but just his, his all round play. He's getting a lot of possession. He's hand passing the ball off. He's looking for his brother. Obviously, he's played with him for years. So it's like Tur- I think Toronto need to like hammer the hammer, but the hammer this time might not be David or Sean O'Shea. It's probably Paddy Clifford. So I don't know who do you think would pick up Paddy, but that will that could go a long way to deciding the game. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. And obviously, from David Clifford's point of view, obviously he's had months of final um, a couple of a couple of weeks ago. Didn't really perform, so you can only really say David Clifford's last big game was the All Ireland final replay in twenty nineteen. Daniel, at the end of the day, this Saturday it's a huge game against Tyrone. It's an All Ireland semi final. It's Crow Par. There's no hiding places, Daniel. So I know there's a lot of pressure on David to perform every game he goes out. He is the captain of this Kerry team, so you know David probably would really want to be stepping up this Saturday. Yeah, I'm sure David probably looks at the way you do. Like, like I know, like league is league, but he, I think the last two league campaigns, he's been the best player in both, both seasons. So like, it's not that he's not playing. And like, twenty was a write off. I didn't think he even had that bad a game against Cork himself. Now Kerry were brutal, um, and it just didn't happen for them. But yeah, I guess looking at it, like you can't really argue what you said there in terms of nineteen, both the final and the replay. I thought he played well. Were big games from. I do think he's still like progressing as a footballer and. I think people look at him like when he scores, say three points from play, and everyone's like, "Ah, Clifford did okay." Like, but that's you know three points from play, laying the ball off. I think people are like, it's almost like Lionel Messi, where we're expecting greatness all the time, and you're judging those standards, which is probably a tad harsh on him. But yeah, I'd say he'll probably be looking at that. And like I said earlier, the five week wait probably hasn't helped him because it's a long time to prepare for an All Ireland semi final, particularly when you're training hard, thinking it's going to be. Three, two weeks ago or last week or now it's going to be this Saturday but yeah I, I think Clifford will be quietly calm. I'd say he'd be chomping at the bit big mm-hmm. time to put in a performance and I think he's that type of player that will rise to, well I'm kind of contradicting myself slightly in the sense that I don't think the five week break will help him I do think he's that type of player that can take on that pressure and can that we saw in the biggest game of all the 19 final replay which if you think about it will probably be the biggest game they'll ever play in because Forty for Kerry fans, not to wind anyone up here, but the five in a row was done. You know, you've never been seen again from either county, which is a pity. And you just had your chance in '82 with Seamus Darby, but he stepped up and he was exemplary himself and Sean O'Shea. So they are big game players. So it's not a case of like they say a lot in the Premier League, like this player hasn't scored against like Harry Kane, used to not be able to in the big games. Still, you know, still question marks over those type of players. Whereas they're, they're, I don't think there's if there is a question mark over Sean O'Shea and David Clifford. They'll answer that big time, both this Saturday and what I expect to be the All Ireland final. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm expecting big performance from the two lads again. I do think Paulie's probably still gonna um, be the main man, mainly because he might just ghost into these positions where you're not. Where's David Clifford? Where's Sean O'Shea? Where's Paulie? Paulie Clifford? Whereas they probably should be concentrating on Paulie. But yeah, I don't think David will put that pressure on himself, David Clifford. But I don't think I think he'll rise to a big time. I'm expecting a massive performance from because I'm just a massive fan. Like. Today he scored those four goals again. Like you got to remember that 2017. Not to go back to it, but the mm-hmm. 2017 All Ireland Final, Dublin Mayo, which a lot of people think is the best game ever played between at least the two sides, if not in, in the modern era. And all everyone was talking about at full time of that game was David Clifford's four goals in the morning. Yeah, final. What, yeah. What other sport does that happen in? You know, uh, he's a serious talent that is exceeding his own high expectations. And I maybe there's been an ever so small, slight lull based on that court performance, but. I'm expecting a, a massive, massive performance on Saturday. Yeah, hundred percent. It'll be it'll be great to see the man live in action. I'm not, I'm not rubbing it into anyone watching this podcast, but I think it's the first time we've got to see David Clifford live. So I am. Really Are you serious? I, I think oh, so. I think so. So I'm really looking forward to it. And as just, well as just, that, just on, just, just on that, John. Sorry, yeah. across, but yeah, like the Dublin Kerry. I got a massive Dublin. Obviously, it's the accent to tell you. Been all the honor finals and cheering on the doors, but my eyes were glued to Clifford yeah. for both those games. They were literally glued to him. 
Um, he just has that Lionel Messi aura about him. He just does. Yeah. Yeah, no, because it, it's funny because he played against Cavan in that All Ireland minor semi final, and he 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 tear those spaces. So uh, a lot of the lads are probably still so from that game. But uh, really looking forward to seeing uh, Mr. Clifford in action this Saturday. Throw down the things, Daniel. Uh, obviously, yep. you know there is there is big pressure on them uh, this Saturday to perform, and obviously you have the likes of Matty Donnelly, Darren McCurry, Kieran McGeary flying at the minute. I think McGeary's getting mm-hmm. a lot of uh, doing going through a lot of work this year, and he's flying it so. Them boys really need to be stepped up to play this Saturday as well, Daniel. Yeah, it probably comes down to like, can like the likes of McGarry, Manny Donnelly, Mark Bradley, can they outscore this Kerry forward line? Which, like, not to be on too much of a downer talking about Tyrone here, but again, you compare the two forward lines, maybe in two or three years they can, but at the moment they're probably a little bit short of that top level. But like, like you said, Darren McGarry is like a serious talent. They they do have some sort of firepower where, like, say you compare them to males, they they have a better forward line than male do. In terms of their full forward line in particular, that's a, like that's true. And Kerry's weakness is the full back line, so I can see the argument to some sense that you get the ball to that forward line. Like I, and again, I do see them starting well. Like I do, I get, keep going back to first quarter. You'll have Darren McCurry maybe on two scores and maybe a free, and Matthew Donnelly on one or Mark Bradley on one, and a bit of excitement in the air. So I can, and again, goals will obviously be crucial here. Can they nick a goal, get a one four to five lead? As I said. But over the 70 minutes, do they have that f- sustainable firepower? And like Kerry's bench is like, it's not like Dublin's level in, in their pomp, but it's not like a million miles away. And the fact that their bench somewhat competed with Dublin's bench in those 19 finals suggests that they're they're getting there and they have a serious bench. Tyrone, like they do have some sort, like they have a few kind of options in terms of maybe how to change the team around, maybe move a lot, some lads in, some lads out. It'll be, it, it will be fascinating in terms of how they try and get the ball into the likes of McCurry and Donnelly. It'd be interesting, as I said, Peter Hart's role is 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 like, is he going to have a free role in the sense to bomb forward all the time? you got to remember, like, Tyrone did get a lot of those scores from their defence um, against um, Monaghan in the last day. They could definitely, they all chipped up with a point. That could, could be, is that sustainable? Possibly, it depends. Like, are the carry forwards going to track those runners? So, there, there are, like, kind of small nuggets and small portions of hope for Tyrone which they could take advantage of, and particularly with a well-planned uh, out attack, could take advantage of Kerry's weakness in that full back line. But while I do think the full back line is gettable, you've got to get the ball into the full back line. And mm-hmm. I do think Kerry are particularly strong in that half ball uh, back line. I do think Palmer, if you, you know, you play him at six, you've got like Mike Green there, Gavin White, the likes, you've got the experience of David Moran, who I haven't, I don't think has been at the level he's been at before, but still like fantastic in midfield. And even bring it to, not to change subject too much, but to the kickouts, like that'll be a huge battle. And I do think Kerry have Tyrone's number in that midfield. Like you think of the amount of games David Moran's played over the the years against the against Brian Fenton, and well, never really got on top there. He's got serious experience. Um, so maybe like I guess Tyrone's advantage there is Niall Morgan's phenomenal um, goalkeeper. Like even listen to Paul Flynn during the week, he was saying that. He'd, he'd have the zonal press perfectly and have the side sideline covered. Yet, Niall Morgan would pick out his man right on the sideline. And for Paul Flynn to say that, having played against like Rory Began and all these incredible goalkeepers, as well as played with Stephen Cluxon, you know, shows you what a phenomenal goalkeeper Niall Morgan is. So, there's definitely you know chances for Tyrone. You know, those couple of things we said: full forward line, kickouts. If Niall Morgan can get it right and push it out to the wings, away from that carry midfield. But again, there's a lot of too many ifs and question marks. And I think some of that will come off, but. Come 70 minutes, I do think Kerry will have enough going forward that they'll, uh, they'll eventually eat them out. But yeah, pretty excited for that first. Uh, I don't know why I'm building up this first quarter so much, I guess, because we'll probably get rid of the water breaks next year, please God. But mm. I'm really expecting a big first quarter from, from Tyrone. And some of that stuff will have to work for them to get ahead. And that's the only chance they have if they get an early lead is to try and bore, bore the life out of Kerry, maybe. So they might have some game plans in that sense. But you, you John, you think about like, it's like playing the dubs. In their pombos, I said you need four or five game plans just to beat them. Mm. Whereas a lot of teams came to Crow Park, Kerry included, with one or two game plans, and then they get a one point lead. And Kerry didn't know how to hold on to the ball, not too dissimilar to Dublin against Mayo there last day. Mm. Uh, like you think of the way Kerry gave the ball away in that 19 final. If Tyrone are pointed up with a minute ago, have you guys got a plan to keep the ball? Because I don't think they hung on very well against Monaghan, to be honest. With you. I thought Monaghan left a couple of points out there. So I, I have concerns how they finish, but. Expecting a big star, and like I said, there, there's definitely room in that fullback line. If McCurry, if they can just get McCurry on the ball, get the ball into him, he's, he's definitely got a goal on him, if not a couple of points. 
Yeah, hundred percent, Dan. Obviously, Niall Morgan had a huge game last um, yeah. last time at the Ulster final. He was coming out, he was drifting out, and I I, I had the laugh in the beginning. He was saying to, to the off ball last during the week, he wants to see a very boring performance by Niall Morgan. He wants to <laughs> see him staying at home. What do you think, Daniel? Will Niall Morgan have a big say in this game? Obviously, will he be drifting out? Will he be staying put? What will, be, what will Mr. Morgan be at this Saturday, Daniel? Well, it's our honour to win. Niall Morgan needs to have a ten out of ten game, and what I mean by that is. Contradiction of 10 out of 10, but like 80 to 90% kick outs dialed in and you know, nailing those slay frees and stuff like that. And maybe I don't know, winning, winning one of the carry kick outs or popping it down, uh, because that, that's another thing, not to get too lost in this, but like the first time it was the Toronto Monning game that was played, and I was reffing in up, so obviously the keepers were coming up. It was the first time it was properly shown like Roy Begg and Niall Morgan, keepers up, manic stuff. And then I ref the game, either the following day or during that week. And suddenly the the minor goalkeeper of like, you know, this Division 2 team that I was refereeing, you know, was doing all this, coming up for the kickouts. So it's amazing that you, you mm-hmm. don't appreciate the influence these guys have yeah. on the young kids watching. Like, I know I kind of, like, I, I played a bit in goal myself. I'd love the opportunity to do a bit of that now. <laughs> yeah. I, I still quite haven't quite worked out the... The, is there a positive? Is there a net positive from it? Probably not. But I guess the whole manic and even watching the Dublin Mayo, it wasn't picked up. But Comerford was ready to go for a couple of kickouts or at least both. Uh, yeah. You know, like Rob <laughs> Henny, and it wasn't talked about the, on the German commentary because they had 101 yeah. things to watch off the ball. But they were inching forward, so it's, it is a common theme. So I am expecting Niall Morgan. Like and again, the old nothing to lose attitude with Tyrone. I guess I think they'll have something planned with Niall Morgan in terms of. I don't know if he pushes up to Paul Murphy on a kick out or something ridiculous and really press. But in terms of his, it, like uh, in the beginning, he mentioned if, if there is a boring performance in Niall Morgan, it's nailing those kick outs. And they, like, because Kerry have a brilliant press, like since the, what is it, 60, 16 or 17, 17 semi final against the Dubs when they clucks and had the meltdown, or maybe it was 16, I think it was 17, that they, they had this like press and Eamon Fitzmaurice's press and they, they've always done and they seemed they've nailed it against Cork, like Cork had to go along a lot. But at the same time, what you touched on earlier, they haven't really played a proper team since the 19 final replay in uh, in a championship game. So they haven't faced a Niall Morgan since the, since Stephen Clux in the 19 replay. And of course, when they beat, when they played Niall Morgan in the 19 semifinal. So Tyrone could have a possibly advantage there on the kickouts. Um, and that could be like, you know, at the end of the game, you're looking to go, maybe there is, Something there, but you know, more has got to have they've got to have some sort of uh, strategy to beat the press, and it'll be a big thing because he's not too dissimilar now to Stephen Clux in the sense that the Kerry crowd, if they win one of Niall Morgan's kickouts, you'd be sure there'll be a big roar. And when Clux missed a kickout against Kerry, there was the same, so he's going to have a massive, massive part in this game. And if Tyrone are to win, he has to have a, a nine or a ten out of ten performance, and that's everything kickouts, freeze, and possibly pushing up and winning a kick out or forcing a kick out over the line or something but that'll be the best bit John and what I, why I'm slightly jealous is you'll see just watch Niall Morgan for not just his own kick outs but the carry kick outs as well yeah yeah definitely Dan definitely and I suppose obviously you were referencing goals there and the goals really could decide this game mm-hmm. and obviously it doesn't seem to be like it's like it's going to be fair for a couple of goals but who knows you did reference though uh, Darren McCurry maybe getting in for a goal I don't know, like it's so so far in the championship, he looks like he has been tipping over the freeze, he's been scoring some sensational points, there's no doubt about that. But if Tyrone are to score a goal in this game, which I really think they will need to do to win this game, Daniel, who would that man be? Yeah, and like, have they scored is it one did I hear one goal in three championship games this year? They, they haven't scored that many goals anyway, is the is the is the crux of it. Like I did mention Darren McCurry, but like as you said that that's what I probably agree with you, like they're they have to find ways of getting him close to the goal to maybe take on his man. And there's definitely an opportunity for a dummy solo and Darren McCurry to sidestep someone. You know, when you have someone that good, you just got to mm-hmm. try and block it. And the dummy solo's on every day of the week. So, but yeah, is, is there, like, I am struggling in terms of while this Kerry fullback line is, you know, quote, gettable, is there that player there? It might have to come, like, I don't think, like, I know I said Darren McCurry could possibly get a goal, but if it is to come, it probably is going to come from a, I think all the way back to maybe a Peter Hart just ghosted yeah. him. Like he's a brave man for a goal. I know he scored a goal, a consolation goal against the Dubs in a, but it was still an all iron final. Uh, that might have been a penalty actually. But like by and large, he's great at just ghosting in, and it, he's a good finisher if he's faced one on one. So if Tyrone are going to get a goal, it might be a McCurry, you know, dummy solo, maybe commit a man and lay it off to a runner. So, but yeah, like you look again, if you just say goals, right, and you look at that Kerry team, 
Sean O'Shea can score a goal, Stephen O'Brien mm. can score a goal, David Clifford can score a goal, Paul Ganey can score a goal, and Paddy Clifford can score a goal. They've all got like the the CV to back that up as well as the potential to keep scoring. This Toronto team, can I see Darren McCurry scoring a goal? Maybe, but it might have to come from a runner off the shoulder or something like that. But like you said, if Toronto get a goal, like, and I do expect not to be too dis- disingenuous to Kerry fans, but the Toronto fans will definitely outnumber the Kerry fans, and they'll definitely, mm. if not, they'll definitely be louder than the Kerry fans. And I saw the momentum switch in that Dublin Mayo game, and it was all Mayo fans I could hear, all Mayo fans at the stadium. Mayo would not have won that game if it was behind closed doors. The comeback just wouldn't have happened. Dermot O'Connor would not have gone for that ball, for example. It's little things like that. And that, that will play a small part if Tyrone can kind of get a goal or get ahead. Those Tyrone fans are pretty, you know, boisterous when they want to be. So and maybe a Peter Hart goes in as opposed to Dar- uh, McCurry. But uh, I like. I think McCurry's a cracking player. And maybe eventually he'll add goals to his game. And look, you don't know until he does it. But yeah, I'd struggle maybe by and large to see enough goals from Tyrone to see off. Which, which again, people were saying about Mayo against the Dubs. And to be fair... Mayo didn't get the goal in the end, but Dublin only scored 14 points in 90 minutes, you know, so if they get it right at the other end, they might not need a goal. So you, there's things you don't think of and think you think that's impossible, but stranger things as well. 100%, 100%. Obviously, that thrown defence, they've obviously uh, shorted it up since that uh, game in Killarney massively, the big mm. improvements, especially in those championship we've seen. Roland McMahon really uh, manning his, uh, man his uh, back line really well, but he did kind of wreck the stuff against uh, Cavan. I know he got like a red card and various bits and pieces like that, but obviously, if Kerry were to get a goal or even kind of get in, this thrown defence, they've definitely shorted it up, Dan. Yeah, and it's just like, with Kerry, you've just got to stop that first goal because Kerry are the team like they they have that bit of rootless streak that the dubs will be happy even at their pomp again to make a comparison to dubs are tapping over the points when needed not dublin were rootless themselves as well but i'm talking about when they have a team beaten that they're well able to take the points but kerry seem to you get one goal kerry score one goal and they get like a hunger for it. it's almost like geez that felt great let's do it again so it's for Toronto, it's a big thing stop that first goal because if, if clifford gets in for that early goal then I think it's curtains because like Kerry are just going to keep moving that ball quickly. But there has been improvements in that Toronto defence. Like, like they, they they have as I said improved. They've definitely improved from that that first like 20, 30 minutes against Tony Gall. They're much better against Monaghan. But like I said, I did think towards the end, while the defence did hold out, and you, you got to be like looking at the results, saying fair play, they hung on by points. But I do think Monaghan, like they had a chance Monaghan at the end to slip it. It'll go to extra time. I, I don't see any other winner other than Monaghan in that game, to be honest with you. So, uh, while you always got to look at the results and go from there, that sometimes you got to say, well, hang on a second. While the defence held out, there are still gaps in that defence. And m- while they might do well in the sense that they might keep the goals out like they've done, like they've managed to, um, you know, be by and large done all right against the goals, this Ker- this Kerry team can open them up. And if they do... They, they, they wouldn't have come up against a Kerry team aside from the time they played them in, in Clarence he got absolutely mm-hmm. battered was it six goals Kerry got that day or five it's or six mad, yeah. yeah now I know one of them came from the 45 it was a bit of a mad game to be fair but and they have shored the defence up I guess this will be the massive test and whether they can keep like I said not just the big names quiet but the Stephen O'Briens the Paul Gainies who if you don't pick them up they're going to well able to take not just a point but bury a goal if needs be and I do expect Kerry to be on goals from the start now whether that's the right tactic remains to be seen but Kerry would definitely be looking for an early goal and trying to and that, that'll be can Tyrone hang on in there in that first quarter like I said and get that two point lead and go from there really, you know yeah definitely Dan. well Dan I know you're in a hurry tonight you have a bit of a mm-hmm. train tonight but if you were to call it last prediction on it Kerry v Tyrone who's going to do it Kerry will win and I think they'll win by I think they'll win by seven or eight I think they're too strong and like I said start of the year I, thought, I said Kerry and Dublin are far ahead of everyone may have surprised me that Galway before him surprised me and the last 20 minutes really impressed with them against the Dubs obviously the Dubs fell apart so I'll, look, I'll give you my, I don't want to give my prediction away of Kerry Mayo just in case it's our own Mayo but uh, <laughs> I'll stick with Kerry by 7 or 8 but 7 or 8 would still be a really good game for maybe 40-50 minutes so I do expect Tyrone to be in it and just run out of gas at the end so but really looking forward to it I'm very jealous you're going to be there as well <laughs> so what you're saying is John do not put 10 quid on Toronto win <laughs> no no there's Kerry minus I think 5 or 6 available I'd, I'd strongly urge you to back that uh, enjoy, and enjoy cheering on David Clifford but uh, yeah it should be, a, it should be a great game though it, it, they always are all in semi-finals
Yeah, yeah. Dan, I'm really, really looking forward to it. And of course, uh, a shout out to, to uh, Mead Tyrone in the minor All Ireland final uh, at one o'clock on Saturday as well. The very best luck to both teams. It, that should be a cracking game, and uh, I'll hopefully get into that game as well. Uh, Daniel, thanks a million for joining me this week. And of course, this podcast is sponsored by orgoretro.com and the tax board. Use my promo code JMAC podcast to get 15% off on orgoretro.com and get the best skins, gloves, and equipment on attack.ie. Be attack minded. Daniel, take it easy. Mind yourself, John.